What kind of ad was that? Oh, anyway, is the dance over? Oh, thank God! Hello, boys. I've always wanted to play to a captive audience. For the love of God, don't f us. While that's going on, Chekhov is distracting Cybot, pretending to be the captain of the ship, while Kirk and the others sneak in. Where are they going? Spock, hold your horse, Captain. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say- I refuse to believe a line that stupid is in a Star Trek movie. Hold your horse, Captain. No, don't play it again! I've already repressed it! It's gone! You play that clip, all I'm gonna see is... <laughs> <laughs> Even as we speak, a Klingon warship is on its way. We estimate arrival within the hour. I imagine the Klingons will be quite angry. You are under attack by superior Federation forces. It wasn't bloodshed I wanted. Wait, come back! I'm not done mispronouncing things. Hand over all your wascally wabbits. Five on Shatner's very bizarre bucket list finally gets fulfilled. <laughs> That's right, cats don't dance. No more footing around. Forget it, Shake. It's Chitara. Oh, let's face it, it's better than. Hold your horse, Captain. I at least gave you the option of three to hate. But it turns out Cybok has used his power to brainwash the hostages, and now they have Kirk captured as well. Cybok and Spock recognize each other as old friends from long ago, but Spock still refuses to join him. Thus, they're forced to fly Cybok back to their ship, all while the lead singer of KISS closes in on them. To get us inside and re-raise the shields will take... Exactly 15.5 seconds. ...an eternity during which we'll be vulnerable to Klingon attack. He speaks the truth. Wait a minute, don't they have a Klingon general there? Why don't they just use him to tell the guy to stand down? Fly her in manually. Or, this works too. So Kirk, Spock, and Bones are put in the ship's prison while Cybok continues to brainwash the crew by taking away their pain. But we also find out some very interesting info. I ordered you to defend your ship. You ordered me to kill my brother. You mean he's your brother, brother? Cybok couldn't possibly be a brother because I happen to know for a fact you don't have a brother. Technically, you are correct. Yeah, you see? I have a half-brother. So what I told you was true, from a certain point of view. Yeah, they pulled the old you never asked trick just so they can connect these two together. Honestly, the story would have worked just as well if they were close friends instead of brothers, but screw it, doesn't matter. What's Cybok's evil plan? My Vulcan ancestors were ruled by their emotions. They believed in a place in which these questions of existence would be answered. The greatest adventure of all time. The discovery of Shakari at the center of the galaxy. So, and I swear I'm not kidding here, Cybok is literally looking for God. Oh, and I don't mean in a spiritual sense or look within yourself. No, no, I mean physically locate him. Find out where he's been hiding. And he thinks that God's been covering up heaven for all these years behind something called the Great Barrier. No ship has ever gone into the Great Barrier. No probe has ever returned. Oh, and don't think I'm misinterpreting that this is God or Heaven, because he literally uses those terms later. Place from which creation sprang. Heaven. Eden. Call it what you will. God's a busy man. Yeah, kinda hard to believe they're really going here. I mean, it's pretty hard not to be let down when you're being promised God in your movie. That's kind of a lot of build-up. What are you standing around for? Do you not know a jailbreak when you see one? But Scotty breaks them out of their cell and tells them where he thinks they can get a distress signal out. And is it me, or is the placement of those pipes really kinda stupid? Mr. Scott, you're amazing. There's nothing amazing about it. I know this ship like the back of my hand. <laughs> They start climbing to get to their location, but Spock believes he has found a faster way. I believe I found a faster way. Oh, and never mind the obvious shadow of the lift holding him up. I'm sure it's just the shadow of his really fat wallet in his back pocket or something. It appears we're too heavy. Must be all those marshmallows. Fire the rockets! Wait a minute, what was the order of the decks they passed? 52, 64... 63, 
52 again, 77, 78, 78 again, and then the ceiling. Oh. No, why did you stop? Apparently the layout of this ship is like a video game glitch. You keep going higher and higher, and yet somehow you keep getting lower and lower. Go through the ceiling, I'm sure you'll end up at the floor again. But they're caught once again, and Cybok decides to have a little chat. I want your respect. Are you afraid to hear me out? Wait outside. Okay, beat him up. I mean, come on, guys! You outnumber him three to one! He has no weapons, just hold a knife up to his throat and say, Give me back the ship, you pointy ear, Sean Connery! Your pain is the deepest of all. I can feel it, can't you? But instead, we see Cyborg try to take away the pain of Bones and Spock, in the hopes of winning them to his side. Arthur, oh my god, don't do this to me. I'm here. I'm with your dad. Now, to be fair, this scene is very well done, as we see the pains our characters suffer, and even discover that many times our pain helps in forming who we are. Bones, you're a doctor. You know that pain and guilt can't be taken away with a wave of a magic wand. They're the things we carry with us, the things that make us who we are. I don't want my pain taken away, I need my pain! A fair enough statement, but all I'm thinking is, how the f*** is he making these images appear? He never did in the opening, and you never see it with anyone else. And we're told it's not just inside their minds, as clearly all four of them can see the visuals. And on top of that, where did this power come from anyway? It's not like psychiatry where he talks to them, he just sort of looks at them and the pain goes away. Where do you learn to do it? How's it being accomplished? Never addressed! We just assume that he's a Vulcan Jesus. Uh, Jesus. I have found myself and my place. I know who I am, and I cannot go with you. Cybok's brainwashing doesn't seem to work on them, but they decide to join him anyway, because they're as curious as he is. Um, you sure you didn't brainwash him? They say no ship can survive this. I say they're wrong. I say the danger is an illusion. Apparently it is an illusion, because not only do they make it through with no problem whatsoever, I mean, the ship doesn't even shake, but they literally do it in the span of just a couple of seconds. How oh, is this the great danger they were talking about? Were all the ships in the galaxy just like, Duh, it looks dangerous! And never went in? What kind of explorers are these? The bully go where no man is gonna to cowardly run away from anything that looks different! The Great Barrier is about as threatening as the Ring of Fire from Finding Nemo! <laughs> Terrifying! So they take a shuttle down to planet... heaven. Come across something big. It appears when the remains of a Brontosaurus burger, Captain. Is this the voice of God? One voice, many faces. Does this better suit your expectations? The cowardly lion is God? I'm the Messiah! I'm the Messiah! Hallelujah! Actually, it was disgustingly easy. Kind of like stepping through a light fog. And how did you breach the barrier? With a starship. Could it carry my wisdom beyond the barrier? Excuse me? Yes, Kirk, do you ingeniously want to point out the painfully obvious? What does God need with a starship? Bring the ship. I said, what does God need with a starship? <laughs> I think the real question is, what does Kirk need with a wire strapped to his back? Why is God angry? He's not answered his question. What does God need with a starship? All right, I'm convinced he's God. The ship. I must have the ship. Now, to be fair, according to most texts, God has asked for a lot of bizarre things. Jesus, die on the cross. What? Abraham, kill your son. Huh? Moses, wander through the desert for about 40 years. 
asking for a starship almost sounds reasonable. An eternity I've been imprisoned in this place. But they are now convinced that this is not any god at all. So, what is he then? Reveal yourself to me. <laughs> What's wrong? Don't you like this face? What a twist? I don't even get it. It's him, but it's not him? They never really explain it. This is my doing. This is my arrogance. My vanity. I am you, and you are me. I am you. You are me? I am you. So Cybok tries to fight off the... whatever, as Kirk has his ship fire a torpedo at it. It kills Cybok, but doesn't seem to destroy the entity. But the teleporter starts working, but can only beam up two people, so Kirk says beam up Spock and Bones. But the Klingon ship arrives! Funny, I guess that's two ships that made it through the horrifying Great Barrier! And destroys the beast with its laser gun. So a photon torpedo barely hurts it, but a few shots from a tiny laser kills it off? Logical. He's then beamed aboard the ship, where it turns out that Spock convinced the Klingon general to outrank the crazy guy chasing him. Just like they should have done before! Oh god, who cares? The movie's almost over. Let's just hear our half moral that even VeggieTales could tell us. Is God really out there? Maybe he's not out there, Bones. Maybe he's right here. Human heart. Well, one place he definitely isn't is in this script. Why? Because no loving God would ever let us end on this scene. You're really bringing it back to this scene? Like, this was the big favorite in all the movie? You know what? When it's paced this way, it almost seems like nothing happened. Bones, did we do a weird thing where we search for God and Spock lost his brother? If it's not mentioned in the next Star Trek movie, I don't care. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Roll, roll the credits, quickly cross the screen. Oh, thank you. That was Star Trek V, and let me tell you, for a movie about finding God, I really feel like nothing was accomplished. At times it can have some good moments, even some good character development, but a lot of the scenes don't tie together, a lot of the characters seem pointless, the comedy is really bad, and plus, the story is just beyond ridiculous. I feel closer to finding God in History of the World Part 1 than I did with this film. And granted, the next film is a lot better, but we still have a whole nother generation of movies to f*** it up. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to.